Good morning, everybody. Hi, I'm Jim Hoffman. I am pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is Monday morning, 1145, time for our daily devotion. Uh, we'll take a couple minutes and just recognize folks as they sign in today and, and let us know that they're here by their comments. And then in a couple minutes, we'll get started with our devotion time. I think many of us are going to be excited. We'll have some comments about the fact that it rained today. It's kind of nice to have some free water on our lawns. I appreciate it a lot. Cuts down my water bill. <laughs> but if you're with us this morning and you want to just leave a quick comment, that would be great. Love to know that you are here. Good morning. Hi, Cherry. Hi, Garth. Good to see you this morning. Hi, Murray. Hi, Diane. Good morning to you. Good morning, Linda. Hi, Diane. Good morning to you. Great. Folks are signing in. Hi, Barbara Paddock. Glad you're with us this morning. Hi, Susan. Yes, it's a beautiful rainy Monday. For those of you who are here, we're going to be reading out of November. Uh, November. Not sure that's actually a book in the Bible, but Numbers is. So we're going to be reading out of Numbers chapter 6. If you would like to find that, that would be great. Hi, Marilyn. Good morning to you. Good morning, Jack. Glad to have you with us. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Marie. Good morning. Hi, Pat. Good morning to you. And as I said, we're going to be reading out of Numbers chapter 6. So if you want to find that, that would be great. We'll wait a few more seconds and then we'll get started. So Numbers chapter 6 is where we're reading from. We're reading what's called the priestly blessing, and it is verse 22 to verse 27. So let's take a moment now to read the scripture. Oh, by the way, hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris Mueller. Glad to have you with us. So here's what uh, the author writes in Numbers chapter 6. It's called the priestly blessing, and it says, The Lord spoke to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, you will bless the Israelites as follows. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and grant you peace. They will place my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Uh, the devotion for today is written by Laura Cristina Quantila de, Mo de Moda. She is from Dominican Republic. Her focus verse is number 6, verse 25, that says, The Lord makes his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And here is uh, the author's thought. She writes, From 4 to 6 a.m. each morning, I spend time in prayer and devotion. I find it the best time to engage in conversation with God, praising and thanking God for each new day. As I was meditating one morning, I thought, what does God's smile look like? What can we do to make God smile? Just then, the young man who delivers the newspaper came by. Every morning when he greets me with a warm smile and a hug, I imagine God smiling upon me. A smile can bring encouragement to someone who is sad or lonely. A way of saying to someone who is heartbroken, wait on the Lord. God loves you and so do I. A good deed paired with a smile can assist the vulnerable, the aged, children without parents. It can give support to the local vendor who works diligently 
to supply fresh fruits and vegetables. A passing smile to those we encounter might be just enough to offer hope. What does God's smile look like? It looks like the smile we bestow on all those around us. It looks like the joy we bring to others in our words and our deeds. When I return a smile, I know that God is smiling upon me as well. And the thought for the day is, when I smile at others, often through words and deeds, God smiles at me. Uh, one of the things that struck me about this devotion was the amount of time she spends in devotion from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, honestly, I like sleep, so from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. most mornings, I'm still in bed at that time. Um, usually, if I get up at 6 a.m., that means that I have to get up early for something that's going on that day, but I'm usually not up quite that early. I have a different routine and a different part of the day where I like to spend in time of prayer and devotion myself, um, but not for not for that time frame of the morning. Um, the other thing that you know that struck me about the devotion too is is the way in which we encounter and engage other people around us. On uh, Friday mornings when I'm driving to the golf course, I'm going out uh, Volker towards um, 4:35. And when you cut up um, on uh, 350 and at uh, uh, Eastwood Traffic Way, you take Eastwood Traffic Way up to get on to 435. And under the bridge right there at 435 and Eastwood Traffic Way, there's usually someone that's sitting there. Um, and they're there for the purpose of usually asking for a handout. But, but they have these, these twisted stick things that they find. And, and I don't know if they're pieces of vine that they've cut and stripped down and dried or something like that. But, but one of the things that, that I've seen there, and it's, it's written in like spray paint or maybe some red chalk or something like that, is if you're going to stare, at least smile while you're doing it, right? So they, they know they encounter quite a few people who come to that stoplight waiting to, uh, to make a left and get onto the highway and and they've just written this neat little note that says, if you're going to stare, at least do it with a smile, right? You know, you think about it. I, I, I think I read this somewhere along the line. I may be um, misinterpreting this or I might be incorrectly remembering this. But I think someone once said that, that when someone smiles at you, it's nearly impossible to not smile back at them, right? That for the most part, if you just smile at someone, even if they're a stranger, if you smile at them, you know, as you encounter one another, it's really hard for them to not smile back at you, right? It's kind of infectious in its own way. Now, that's awful hard to tell today in, in this environment when everybody's running around with a face mask on. Um, you know, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to know who you're engaging even. Uh, I was at Brookside Market last night, and, and luckily for me, Brad Moss saw me and, and said hello to me because I didn't recognize him between his baseball cap and his mask that he had on. It was a little difficult to tell that it was Brad Moss. It took me a moment for that to register. But, you know, so it's hard with all these face coverings and everything like that to be able to see. I, I did see someone post, I think, on Facebook or something like that. You know, they're coming out with a mask that has like a clear space across it so you can actually see people smile. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of a clear plastic or something like that, but we'll, we'll see how that all goes. If you just think about it, though, in the world in which we live right now, um, we honestly have enough angst and stress and, and anger and all of that stuff going on. It would be nice if we would do more to overcome that with just smiling at one another. Because I think in the smile, there's a joy that comes forth. There's a, a maybe a kind of a vocalization of a contentment of some kind or, or a hopefulness. You know? And in this environment, I think that a lot of people are looking for signs of hope. They're looking for signs of peace and joy. They're looking for some signs you know, that God loves and that we are loved by God. And I think a smile has that kind of power. 
So the next time you encounter someone and you have an opportunity, maybe from afar or, or in some way, maybe on your mask you can paint a smile or something like that, but you know, somehow figure out how to smile at someone. Because I think in doing so, you're sharing God's smile with them as well. Let's take a moment to, to pause and to pray. So God of joy and blessing, thank you for your smile that we see reflected on each other's faces. We pray, oh God, that you might teach us what it means to be your love and your hope in this world and your smile most of all. We thank you for this in Christ. Amen. So, oh, thanks, Linda Potter. I see that you've been kind enough to send me some smiles. And Christine, I'm glad that you joined as well. And Shirley, good morning to you. So I didn't get a chance to read your names uh, before we started the devotion, but I do notice that you're here, and I'm glad that you were able to join us today. Thanks, everybody, for being here today with us. Uh, again, just a, a couple of updates. We'll be on um, uh, at this time tomorrow at 1145 and on Wednesday at 11.45. Thursday, I'm going to probably pre-record this a little bit earlier. Um, I have to be out in Olathe by noon to be able to pick up our rental truck for our um, for our vacation. So, um, And then uh, Thursday will be the last day that we'll do the devotion uh, this week. And then I'll be off for the next couple of weeks. So just so you know, uh, we won't pick these up until I get back from vacation, which will be after August 4th. So just want to um, thank everybody for being a part of these. I really appreciate your diligence in coming and spending this time and daily devotion with us. I look forward to the next few days with you. Um, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your Monday. Have a great day and God's peace and blessings be upon you.